All right, what up everybody? It's Chris Roscoe with Operation Moxer and today I'm gonna to be talking about hypersensitivity. I told you guys I was gonna make this video last week, but shit got kind of crazy, so I didn't, so I apologize for that, but I'm finally making good on my progress and we're gonna go into hypersensitivity today. And I wanna talk about it from a couple different perspectives, but I also want you to keep in mind that I am gonna be explaining this from my own unique um, personal experience and what I've learned and how I overcame my own hypersensitivity and what I learned about it. So. I want to go right off saying that hypersensitivity can easily feel like a more generalized, broad way of being or personality trait or something like that. But my own personal experience of it is that it's not a broad, generalized thing. In fact, it appears more broad and generalized the more afraid you are of something, the more sensitive you are to whatever specific thing or things you're sensitive to, it will appear more generalized depending on your level of fear. And I want to go into what I, what I mean by that. So my experience of hypersensitivity um, came from the trauma of losing my dad as a kid. He died when I was seven. I saw it happen. It was really traumatic. And so I became hypersensitive to a lot of different things as a result of that. I became hypersensitive, to, I gave the, I became hypersensitive to the idea that I was a bad person because I blamed myself for my father's death because I saw it happen and didn't save him. And so in order to cope with that, I told I didn't know how to save him. So in order to cope with that, I told myself I was a bad person who let his dad die. So I became really hypersensitive of that. And then as later, I realized that I was actually helpless and I hated how helpless I felt. So I became hypersensitive to helplessness. And then I became dependent on my mother. And I was so afraid of, of going out into the big dangerous world that I became dependent on my mother. And so I became sensitive to the feeling of feeling like other people are controlling me. Those are the three main things I was sensitive to the most. And so that meant that I was sensitive to criticism because that would make me feel like a bad person. I was sensitive to criticism because it would also potentially make me feel weak and helpless. I was sensitive to anything that made me feel helpless or weak, sensitive to anything that made me feel like a bad person, sensitive to anything that made me feel like somebody was trying to control me. But the thing about that is I was so afraid of them that it was difficult for me to see them in the context that they were. They showed up in a lot of really weird different areas. Like I was so afraid of becoming a bad person or being seen as a bad person at some point that I physically couldn't speak because I knew that if I were to say something, it could potentially hurt somebody. And if what I said accidentally hurt somebody, to me, that would be validation that I'm a bad person. And so for me, I actually shut the fuck up and couldn't speak for you know long, lengthy periods of time that really felt terrible. And so one of the things that I really want to talk about here, at least from my own perspective of this, is that what hypersensitivity is, rather than a broad generalized state, it's a specific thing or a group of things that you're sensitive to for a specific set of reasons. And if you can figure out what you're specifically sensitive to and for specifically what reason, then you can start to do something about it, but not really before. Because hypersensitivity, like depression, can be a blanket term for actually a sophisticated and specific set of intellectual and psychological processes. And the way I look at it is this. I was afraid of those three things. And so I had three different parts of my personality that were constantly looking out. This is what they were sensitive to. They were sensitive to these things, so they were using their senses to look for validation that I was either a bad person, uh, helpless and weak, or gonna be controlled by somebody else. They were sensitive to these things because they were really afraid of them and didn't want them to happen. So they were sensing out anything in my environment that could potentially make me feel those ways or put me in a situation where somebody else controls me because I was also raised by Jehovah's Witnesses, so I fucking hate that for a lot of other reasons. And those were the things I was most sensitive to. So that means because I was the most sensitive to them, those parts of my personality were really vigilant and really on guard and anytime anything seemed like it was going to come close to either validating that worldview or put me into a situation I didn't want to be in, I went on red alert. And either I would shut up or I would snap at people who were uh, criticizing me or I'd push people away who I thought either made me feel weak or I thought were going to try and control me. And it made me look as though I was hypersensitive. But actually, I was hyper afraid of a specific experience and for a specific reason. And when I acknowledged that I didn't want to feel like a bad person because that's what I blamed my, I blamed myself for my father's death because facing the world as it was, as chaotic and dangerous as it, world, as it was, was too scary. 
So I had to blame myself in order to feel like I had control. So then after that, I was like, oh, I'm afraid of being a bad person because that's what I have to tell myself in order to feel like the world is safe enough to live in. So let me face my fear of the chaos of the world. And now I'm not afraid of being a bad person anymore because I don't have any reason to tell myself that. And I'm afraid of being helpless because the world is chaotic and there isn't anything I can do about it. And I hate that and I don't like the way that feels. So let me make peace with the fact that I do feel that way and that that is true to a certain degree. And now feeling weak and helpless doesn't really bother me all that much because I accept that in a lot of contexts I actually am. Same with being controlled. Find the part of me that's afraid of being controlled. Let it know that it never has to worry about that ever again because once I integrate it, I will be in control. We will work together and nobody else can ever control it. Stop being sensitive, stops being a problem. So the real question is, what is it you're specifically sensitive to and for what specific reason are you sensitive to it? Now, in the examples that I gave, they took a little bit of digging. It took a little bit of time of re really studying my reactions and the context in which brought, and that which brought them up. Because in the beginning, it, they were happening so frequently and in so many different contexts that it seemed, like I said before, to be a broad generalized state, that I was just this hypersensitive, hyper emotional, uh, hyper reactive person when the reality of the matter was I was just hyper terrified of three specific things. And so if you start to study what types of thoughts and feelings come up, what type of uh, circumstances or events bring them up in you, then you can start to look for context clues. You can start to look at, look, okay, what specifically might I be afraid of and what specifically might be my reasons for being afraid of that? And a good way to test whether or not you're finding what you're actually afraid of is to say the words out loud and see if they resonate. Like for me, um, I even did this in my practice last night because um, I wanted to test to make sure that it mattered. And so I, I made up something of like, um, like I'm afraid that uh, my mom will kill me. And it didn't resonate because I'm not afraid of that. But then I said, I'm afraid that I'm a bad person and that my mom might control me. And it's like, oof, I felt things when I said that. And so the way you can test to see if you've pinpointed a belief or a worldview or something like that that needs to be validated and processed is you can speak the words and see if it resonates. And then if it does, you can gauge is that the thing I'm afraid of? Being a bad person. Like, yeah, that makes me feel a lot of things. That's probably the thing I'm afraid of. So let me keep tugging at that thread, owning that I'm afraid of that, see how much I can learn about it, see if there's any actions I can take or any parts of me that need to be healed and expressed, do that, integrate those parts of me, and now this hypersensitivity has been replaced by wisdom. It's been replaced by insight and power and all kinds of really interesting things. And so if you want to learn how to do that, I'd be happy to teach you. I am taking clients right now and I am going to have a group class coming up uh, shortly where I'm going to be walking you through all these different things. But the main thing I want to lead you with, leave you with is that if you are hypersensitive, hypersensitive or you're experiencing hypersensitivity, get specific. As specific as you can. What are you specifically sensitive to and why? And when you can answer those questions, you will have a lot of power, a lot of insight, and a lot of space to be more yourself in the face of whatever it is you might be worried about. So again, if you have questions or anything like that, let me know. I'd be happy to walk you through any of this. Um, let me know if you have any other questions or any other topics you want me to do videos on. I'd be happy to do it. Um, I love you, and I'll see you next time.